Hey everyone! Today I'm really excited because I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite subjects, friendship. Over the last year especially, I have been getting a lot of questions about how I've made friends in New York City and how I have made friends as an adult. I wanted to make this video because before moving here, making new friends was one of the things that I was most afraid of and I was most nervous about because I have really close friends in Los Angeles and I was scared about being in a new place and not having best friends around me. So I want to start with a little background on how I used to view friendships. So when I was a kid, friendships were like my world. They were the most important thing to me. I was like obsessed with my friends. I would like call my friends every day. We were over at each other's houses and that was like my life. They were so important to me. And then as I got into like my teen years and young adult years, my friendships kind of went down on the tier of priorities and it became all about dating. And I think this is something that is super common. I definitely noticed it with my friends and within myself. Dating as the priority definitely took up a decent chunk of my years in my teens and my 20s and it took me a lot of experience and unlearning. I also went through a period especially in my 20s basically all of my 20s until I hit about like 26 27 where my work was like the most important thing and my friendships once again took a hit and were not as important as dating and work now my friendships are just as valuable as my romantic relationships so they're really at the same priority level. I put so much energy into my friendships and maintaining them and I just can't imagine my life without my female friends at this point. So the first thing I want to talk about when it comes to making new friends and making friends as an adult is mindset. One of the first things that I did is I started telling people that I was looking for friends and I didn't try to hide that I wanted friends when I moved to New York City. I would say, you know, I'm feeling a little weird not having friends here. I'm feeling uncomfortable. Whatever I was feeling, I would express that to other people when they would ask me, oh, how's your move to New York? How's it going? I would be honest about that experience. And I feel like that was really great for me because it allowed me to take something that I was feeling on the inside and bring it outside of myself and make it real and it also allowed for the possibility of other people introducing me to people that they know that might be a good fit for a friend for me. Saying yes to things that I would normally say no to was another huge mindset shift that I had to make. I just really started saying yes to a lot of things even if at first it didn't sound super interesting to me or if I was like, well, I'm kind of tired, I don't know. I don't know anyone there, like all of these things that typically pop up in my head that would make me say no, I would just say yes. And I think that that also opened me up to, again, the book club that I'm in, joining The Wing, which is an inclusive co-working space that I belong to, saying yes if people wanted to meet up for coffee, and saying yes to things that in the past I was more likely to say no to. I know that in LA I had this mindset of, I have my friends, I don't need any more friends, I'm good. And now that I'm in the position of being in a new city where I'm the one who needs friends and wants friends, I'm hoping that people are 
open to accepting me and it has made me realize that I want to be open to bringing new people in and bringing new people together. The last big mindset shift that I had to make was accepting that the experience would be awkward. You're just gonna have awkward moments. There are gonna be lulls in the conversation. There are gonna be things where you're like, why did I say that? Or should I have said that? Or that was weird. Why did that come out that way? Like you're gonna have all of those moments and those are totally okay and they happen. And I think accepting that has made it so much better when I enter the space of going on a friend date. I'm not focused on oh my gosh, I want the person to view me this way or, or I want them to think this about me. I'm focused on getting to know them. I'm not obsessing about avoiding awkward moments. And I actually think it's really great to just have those moments at the beginning because awkward moments are a part of being human. Before I move on, I wanna recommend a book that is about friendship. It is called Text Me When You Get Home and I don't have it with me because it's still in a box somewhere and I haven't unpacked it yet. It is by Kayleen Schaefer and this was a book that was actually given to me by one of my new friends here in New York. Her name is Michelle and she gave this to me on one of our very early friend dates because she was like, I think you'll really love this book and she gave it to me and I devoured it. And the stories that she shares in the book really provided me so much comfort and gave me the courage to really put myself out there with other people. Moving on into places. This is a big one. I get asked a lot, where can I meet new friends? I've said this over and over, but I firmly believe that bookstores, libraries, anything around books, it's gonna be a great place to meet people. And the great thing about bookstores and libraries is that they usually have events happening at least once a month and usually it's once a week or multiple times a week. So that can be a really great place to meet people because often people will go to those events alone. That is definitely something that I've noticed because I go to those events alone a lot and I notice other people are there alone. And if you are there to see an author do a reading, a lot of times the other people who are there are really huge fans of that author or they've read their books before and you immediately have common ground for something that you can talk about and bond over. So a place where I have met people in New York is Through the Wing, which is a co-working space. And there are various co-working spaces throughout the country, each offer different services and spaces. And some of them also double as like membership clubs and that's kind of like what the wing is. I think these spaces are really great because you can not only have a space to work but you can also meet other people that may not be connected to your work but you just get along with and you can hang out with. Especially with the wing they have regular events every single week multiple times a week so I have definitely gone to a lot of the events and have met people and have had really great conversations there. Another big one is online. So I have definitely met friends online. One of my very best friends, Carrie, we met through Twitter years ago. I would say it was like five or six years ago now, but I do feel like online can be a great place to meet people. And if you're like, well, I don't know about Twitter. It seems like there's so many people on Twitter now. There are other options. There's Bumble BFF. I have personally never used it, but it is a service that can help you find friends to meet up with. Also, podcast communities. If you listen to podcasts, then you are probably super passionate about the podcast that you listen to. And if you are able to find an online community for that podcast, it can be a really great way to start a connection with someone and potentially take that connection offline. And now a lot of podcasts are doing like live tours and live recordings. And 
I have gone to live recordings for podcasts before and I felt like, oh my God, it's so cool to be with all of these other people who also love this podcast enough to show up for it. They really are just a great starting point for meeting people who are also interested in something that you love. Okay, let's say that you have embraced the awkward moments, maybe you've gone to a couple events, and now you've met someone cool. What the heck do you do now? Well, I'm gonna tell you. I think the main thing here is really all about following up. And this goes for people that you may have met recently, and also people that you may have met a while ago. I feel like we all have at least one person in our minds where we're like, oh, they were really cool. I feel like I could have been friends with them. Well, you know what? You can be friends with them. And I know who my one person is. I actually have multiple people, but there is one in particular that really sticks out to me. So I need to take my own advice here. At least for myself, I feel like I get into this space where I talk tell myself, oh, the moment has passed, it's too late. If they were interested, they would have texted me or gotten in touch with me already. I make up all of these excuses as to why I can't reach out to someone who I met a month ago or months ago or maybe even a year ago or years ago. And I think that the more that I have just put myself out there and I've sent like an email or a text to someone, it has really showed me that it's not too late and that a lot of times the other person is also interested in meeting up and they felt a connection too. So whether it's someone you've met a while ago or someone you've met recently, I think it's really important to be specific about your time frame. You really have to schedule these friend dates as you would a doctor's appointment or a work appointment or a romantic date. Being specific is really committing to the friend date. And I think that whenever someone has been specific with me, it has made me want to step up and actually make it happen. And then there's the following up after the friend date. And this is another kind of following up. It could be a message saying, I had so much fun with you. And that is definitely something that I do because whenever I've gone out on friend dates, I just feel like butterflies and excitement. And I really wanna convey that excitement through a message. So usually when I get home, I will send a message and I'll say like, I had so much fun. I'll maybe mention something that we talked about. And what's really amazing is that in text me when you get home, she talks specifically about this like dynamic where you text your friends when you get home and it's all about wanting to keep that conversation going. And I think that's so true. Sending that message is telling the other person, hey, I think you're awesome. I had a really great time together and I want to keep talking. And that is such a great feeling. It feels so good to do and it feels so good to receive. It just feels good to gush over someone new, especially because I feel like when we're dating someone in a romantic relationship, we often don't feel like we have permission to gush over someone directly. And with platonic friendships, that just completely can go out the window and you have full permission to gush over this person. And it's awesome. I also think sending something to them like throughout the week that makes you think of them, that is also a really great way to follow up. Maybe you talked about a podcast or a book or you see something that makes you laugh and you think the other person will find it funny too. All of those things are really great small connection points to make and they are also an act of following up where you are telling the other person, hey, I'm thinking about you and that always feels good. When I have received those messages from other people, I feel like they care about me, I feel cared for and I feel appreciated and loved. The last thing, and I think one of the biggest thing, is cherishing the vulnerable moments. For me, whether I think about my new friendships or friendships that I've had for years, I can remember the moments where I felt like our friendships went to a new level and often it involves crying, but I feel like 
those moments are so big and they are so special and I can like physically feel in the moment like oh my gosh like we're going to a different place now like this friendship is not the same anymore it's something more and I think that kind of connection is so special and it takes so much courage to tell other people about yourself and your story and your fears and your pain and your trauma and to tell it to someone who doesn't know that about you someone completely new takes so much courage and trust and to be on the receiving end of that is such a big deal and so i think you know allowing for those moments for yourself to share but also to receive that is like the fundamental part of a deeper friendship and just thinking about it is like giving me goosebumps because you know, even with my new friendships now, I immediately can like think about the moments where I thought to myself, oh my gosh, this is it. This is one of those big defining moments. I think those moments really do create a shift and the more that those moments add up over time, before you know it, you're gonna end up with a pretty deep friendship. So those are all of my friendship tips and this was honestly one of my favorite videos to make um, in the last year because I feel like female friendship has been such a big thing for me as an adult but especially moving to a new big city where I didn't have any super close friends here so I feel like I have really felt a lot of growth and momentum and it's just really exciting. I would love it if down below in the comments you would share some of your adult friendship experiences. Have you gone out on a friend date recently? What did you do? Do you have any advice or tips? Do you have any suggestions for places to go? I feel like all of us are always looking for things to do with our friends and that would be super helpful to just have everyone share all of their tips. So that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button so you get notified when I post new videos. And my new podcast is here, One Step. So if you wanna listen to the podcast, there will be a link down below, but make sure you follow on Instagram too because I have been making Instagram content that is exclusive for the podcast that you can only find on Instagram. Honestly, friendship could be a podcast episode. Who knows? All right, I will see you guys later. Bye.